Right, hi again. I'm spoiling you, really, really, really spoiling you. I think the thing is, sometimes it's easier to get things across by speaking to you, actually properly speaking to you, um, with a bit of explanation about what I'm doing. Um, and also, because I haven't got a class at the minute, I miss making videos. You're going to say you like the sound of your own voice, Karen. Maybe I do, I don't know, but anyway. Anyway. So what I've been doing, as you know, and you're probably sick to death of seeing this, is I've been making these little pages so I could make books, okay. I've got two little books already made that are there that you've seen, that you probably think I could recite every page in my sleep. But then, so there's five pages in each of those, um, and I've got now five pages for the next one, so that's three, four, five. And then I was thinking, when I was working on these, now I've done a lot, lot, lot of classes, embroidery classes in my time, and I've discovered that some people, I love the reverse of things, I don't, it doesn't bother me in the least, I really love it because it's evidence, it's evidence of what you've done. Some people are horrified by the reverses of things, and I'm not even saying that the reverses of my things are immaculate because they're not. Um, depends what you're doing. Some are easier to keep neater than others. Obviously, this is all randomly placed stitched papers. Um, so your lines aren't going to be straight on the back or anything. I'm not a person who drags her thread across the work, back of the work. By that, I mean, when I stitch this little piece on, I will fasten it off before I stitch this one. Um, I won't drag my thread across. I never do that. Um, but still, it's quite difficult to keep them pristine and neat and impeccably, impeccably, you know, neat. So I thought to myself, and I always have good ideas when I'm nearly finished, <laughs> I thought to myself, I wonder could I back them with something? But I didn't want to detract from the, I mean, they're so delicate, they really are delicate. I mean, these papers are really quite strong. If I get a piece here... It. They're really quite strong papers, but there's still a delicacy to these pieces that I don't want to lose. So I thought to myself, mm -mm -mm, what can I do? So basically I've decided to tear some of these papers and put them on the back just as a, a little covering. And if you want to look at the back of the piece underneath, they're not completely like fastened down really heavily just tied on randomly so you could still look at the back of it if you wanted to but then I thought well, Karen you've made these ones what are you gonna do because you've made these to put together but it's not impossible now the back of that one I actually buttonholed on a seam there so I'm not going to do anything with that one but this one for example but then having said that there's not a lot going on on there but I also think even though the delicate that the backing of them makes them more substantial without losing that delicacy. So I think I will line all these regardless of how the back is. So I just thought I'd, I don't want to mind, it doesn't matter, it's only a bit of buttonhole stitch. And I also, I've got all my shepherd's papers out here because I need to make some more papers today. So I'll be going on my sewing machine stitching more papers um, on there. So if I just, so literally just randomly tearing these kind of giving a little bit of a, a nod to what the size of the page is. Um, that's not big enough. Let's have a look. And I think I said, if you watched the video last week, I think I said that you need to cut these threads between where you tear in with old, old scissors because there's, there'll be thread, uh, sorry, paper fragments in amongst this and you don't want to use your good scissors so these are old scissors um, so let me just tear it down there I don't want to lose that either I want that still to be visible so it's making decisions um, as you're doing it really so let me see how that one oh it's too big okay so I'll just take that bit off the edge and then again, like I've said before, ad nauseum, don't throw anything away, because even that little bit will be useful at some point in the future. So if I put that on there, there. Now I just need some thread. 
for a needle there. I did bring some thread, I know I did. I probably lost it under all this paper. There it is. Cotton Abroad is 16. My go-to for most things. Just thread my needle. Um, now I'm going to be a bit here and there for the next week or so because I've got to go somewhere tomorrow for the day and Wednesday so I'm not going to be back on those two days. Right so literally just put it through. No knot in this. I'm going to tie this there and then come back. And you don't even notice these little stitches that you get on the front um, and just tie it. With that simple. I'll tie it in three places. So. Um, right. So I'm going to tie that. I won't do it now because um, I don't want to send you to sleep. So it will also be tied there and there and that'll be it. It's so simple but when I look at these that have all been backed. Not that one. <laughs> not that one either. Where are they? Oh there. They just, I don't know, there's a lovely weight to them without detracting from the delicacy of them. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Putting reverses on these pieces of work. Okay, I'm going to go now. I don't want to send you to sleep. Later.